Build scans provide you with a detailed breakdown of the caching activities per build. Here is the Gradle Enterprise Performance Dashboard for the Spring Boot build. This dashboard allows us to identify individual builds according to their value of certain performance properties, like builds with long build times or builds with long dependency download times. Each column represents a single build. The length of the column represents the time value of this build for the selected property. Right now, this is the build time. Let's select the remote build cache property to identify builds with a high number for time savings from the remote caching. Let's pick a build with a high number. We can look at the details of this build. It tells us that the cache has provided execution time savings of 2 hours and 31 minutes for this build. Let's go to the build cache page of this build's build scan. You can find here details about the configuration of the local and the remote caches, for example, which particular remote cache node was used. You also find cache usage information. Uh, you can see here that 780 build actions didn't need to be executed because of the cache. Let's look at the cache overhead. It took 5 seconds to download the output of the build actions from the remote cache. This is serial time. The network speed during the download was 10 megabits per second. As you can see, we don't necessarily need a massive bandwidth to benefit from the cache. Whatever your situation is, Gradle Enterprise will give you the insights to reason quantitatively and precisely about the effectiveness of caching in your different environments. For example, different office locations, CI, and people working from home. You get the caching insights even at build action level. Here is a build scan from the Gradle open source project. Uh, this is a local build that someone ran from their home. We have a task here called patch Kotlin compiler embeddable, that is patching the Kotlin compiler. So the output of the task is the Kotlin compiler itself. The patching job is computational intensive, but the task is also IO heavy because of the large output. Tasks that are mostly IO based like typical copy or archive tasks usually don't make sense to cache and Gradle would by default not cache them. On the other end of the spectrum are tasks that are very computational intensive with relatively small outputs like tests. This is where the gains from caching are the highest. So should we cache this patch task or not? Well, we need more insights to make that decision and Gradle Enterprise gives us that. We can see here that retrieving the task from the cache took 17 seconds. We can also see that this is 10 seconds longer than building it locally. With that information, you can now make the decision to disable caching just for this task in low bandwidth environments like those after confirming that this is typical behavior. With a faster network, this would be different. Getting it from the cache would be at least as fast as building it locally and you're saving compute resources and paying for that with a higher load for network and disk I.O., which is often cheaper. Finally, every cached build action provides you with a link to the build that has produced the cached output, so you have a full audit trail for where your build results are coming from.